Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Rhoda and I'm a doctor working in the UK. Today's video is going to be all about my journey into medical school. Um, I've had a lot of people messaging me about how did I get in, what was the application process like, what do I need to do to increase my chances of getting into medical school. So I thought let me do a bit more of a sit down video where I go through my journey and experience of everything from high school all the way up to the application process and then actually getting in as well. Before I get in, I'm also going to be talking about life lessons that I learned along the way. So stick around to the end to find those. Before I get into it, I've been having a look in my analytics and I found that a lot of people who are watching these videos are not subscribed to the channel. So I would really, really appreciate it if you could hit that subscribe button because it will really help my channel grow. Um, and that would be very much appreciated. I'm going to divide the video into different sections. So I've dropped the um, timestamps in the description below. So feel free to have a look at any specific section that you want. Um, Let's get into it. So a little bit of background about me. So I moved to the UK back in 2003. So I actually grew up in the Netherlands um, up until the age of 13. Um, ja, ik kan nog steeds Nederlands spreken, maar ja, ik heb het heel veel vergeten. Uh, maar ik kan het heel goed begrijpen, maar mijn spreken is niet zo goed. Ik woonde in een hele kleine dorp in, in Gelderland. En dat is vlak bij Duitsland. So yeah, that's enough Dutch for the day. And so we moved here with my family and I started halfway through the first year of high school. So that was a bit of a learning curve. Um, I barely spoke any English. Um, everyone already knew each other, so that was really difficult. My high school was actually really famous. Um, famous for all the wrong reasons. It was the worst high school in our town. Um, so I can pretty much sum up my high school experience in two sentences, and that was daily fights and police presence every single day. And a bonus is someone let off fireworks at one point in the canteen and we all had to evacuate. I was always very studious when I was in high school. I always just did my work, kept my head down and just hoped to get through the high school experience un unscathed. So then I remember doing one of those career questionnaires where you answer a bunch of questions and then you basically get a prediction of what your best career should be. And I did the questions and my career was going to be either a receptionist or a lorry driver. So there's no medicine. Um, and it was probably towards the end of high school when I was doing my GCSE that I really, really started thinking about what I wanted to do. I was really obsessed with medical dramas. That should have given me some clues actually as to what I wanted to do. I was obsessed with Grey's Anatomy, Casualty. It was probably something really, really gradual where I was like, I really want to go into medicine. It wasn't like a light bulb moment where I'm like, ooh, I really want to become a doctor. I couldn't imagine myself doing anything other than medicine. So no pressure there. And I remember towards the end of high school, we had a careers fair. So there's like lots, lots of different talks about different careers. And I, I went to the medicine one and I really, really liked it. And I thought, oh God, I really want to be doing this. And I was also really good at the sciences, really enjoyed like biology and things like that. And I remember my biology teacher asking me and saying, Rhoda, what do you want, what do you want to do when you go to university? And I said, oh, really proudly. I was like, oh, I really want to get into medical school. You know, that's what I really want to do. And then she just looked at me with this really serious face and said, Rhoda, don't, don't even bother trying. You're not, you're not going to get in. And at the time, I didn't actually say anything. I just kind of looked at her like, okay. And it's really crazy how just a few words can absolutely crush your soul. And I remember going back home and just really thinking about her words, thinking maybe she's, maybe she's right. You know, she's a teacher. Maybe I'm aiming way too high. I'm like, who am I kidding? So I kind of went off the whole medicine thing for like a good few months. And looking at my parents, bless them, were like, you can do what you can, at least try. We know you've got the capabilities. And neither of my parents have any medical experience. I don't know any doctors. I don't know any medical students. And I'm the eldest as well. So I've literally had nobody to ask for advice, to actually get real tangible facts. So I went through my GCSE, got really good grades, mostly A's, and I went to college. So that's the two years in between high school and university in the UK. So in college, before I even chose the A-levels that I was going to be doing, I had a look at the entry requirements for the medical schools, so all the different medical schools, and found that they wanted the biology and academic subjects. So I took biology, chemistry, English language and literature, and psychology. Chemistry to this day was my nightmare. Organic chemistry is my trigger word. I struggled so much in college with chemistry. Was always the last person to understand any concepts. Really, really found it really hard. Um, I took loads of extra classes to 
basically try and keep up. So I got really good grades in that. And during college, when it came to work experience, I tried to do as much as possible in terms of kind of extracurricular type stuff whilst I was in college. I did peer mentoring. I volunteered for the local council to deliver kind of youth projects into schools. I volunteered Childline, so, or NSPCC. So I did all of those things. And the summer before I started the application process, I remember having a look at the entry requirements for the unit for the medical schools, and they always mentioned you need to have voluntary experience or some kind of work experience in a caring capacity. So obvious things include hospital, GPs. So the summer before the application process, uh, my whole family went on holiday and I sadly had to stay behind because I thought I really need to make sure I've got some sort of work experience before I start the application process. So I spent most of my summer as a 17 year old emailing GPs in my local area, emailing hospitals that I could take the train to or the bus to. And every single one of those emails, I was rejected. They were like, no, you know, we can't accommodate you. You're too young, you're this and that. And that was really, really hard. I was getting a bit worried. I thought, oh God, summer's about to end and I still haven't got any experience in a caring capacity. So then I thought, okay, work experience in a care home would also count as a caring capacity. So I applied to my local care home and I managed to get myself a voluntary job there, which I did for a couple of weeks. Looking back now, Everyone always tells you that when you're applying to medical school, you need to have experience in a hospital or a GP practice. I can tell you that as long as you have any type of work experience, any type of extracurricular activity, as long as you can say in your personal statement or when it comes to your interviews, that the skills that you have learned will help you in some way or the other during the undergraduate degree or becoming a doctor, and you can justify it in that way, I don't think it even matters that you don't have a GP or hospital experience, which, and I didn't. <sighs> Looking back, it was really, really hard because I didn't have anyone, I, knew, I didn't know anyone, I didn't have any um, family members who were in the medical field, I didn't know any students, so it was really, really difficult. I, a lot of the time I, do, I did feel really alone and I would spend so much time on these forums seeking advice. And, you know, people have it really lucky these days, you know, can go on YouTube, watch videos, you know, can get proper advice from proper people. So now comes the biggie, the application process. And let me tell you, my whole five years of medical school, including finals, was not as stressful as the application process. It was on a whole nother level of crazy. First of all, the application process is long. It is stressful and the interviews and your personal statement and all of that stuff is happening whilst you're still doing your studies, you know, revising and studying for your exams. So it was hard. I found it really, really hard. And in the UK, you apply to four medical schools. That's the maximum you can apply for, basically. My first choice was the University of Manchester. And during the application process, you need to sit an exam called the UCAT. And the UCAT is an exam that you do to apply to medical school and the universities will use that as part of that admissions criteria. And it's kind of similar to the MCAT in the US where it's more of an aptitude test. So it's supposed to test your natural ability into like maths and English and that type of thing. And the higher the score, the better chances your application will be accepted. Obviously alongside your grades and your work experience and everything else and your personal statement. I remember looking on their website, figuring you know trying to figure out how do you actually sit this exam and what do you have to do and it said no preparation required you know it's all about testing your natural ability and I took that quite literally so I did not do any prep whatsoever and that was really really naive of me unsurprisingly I ended up with a really not very good score and two universities actually rejected me outright that I did not meet their minimum requirements. So they had a threshold. So if you did not meet the threshold, your application was basically just thrown into the dustbin, not even looked at. Um, so yeah, those were the two first rejections. So I didn't even get an interview with those universities. I was waiting and waiting, and then I had an interview with Liverpool University. Let me tell you guys, I have never ever done a uni an, an interview in my life. So <laughs> it was a whole experience. And it's really easy. You go in a room, two people sat in front of you and they'll ask you questions in turn. Let me just say, when I was younger, I was not the most outgoing of people. I'm actually, was really, really introverted. So speaking about yourself was my worst nightmare. 
So I went to that interview and they make you wait a long time and you sat with all these other candidates all like stressing out and sweating and that just made me more and more nervous and by the time I was cold I was a nervous wreck. And I remember at one point I got my words twisted in my mouth so much I literally could not speak so I had to ask for a glass of water. And luckily, alhamdulillah, the Manchester University was the interview after my Liverpool one. So I learned some lessons from that, thinking, Rhoda, listen, this is something I'm going to be advocating to a lot of people is fake it until you make it. Nobody knows what your personality is. These people that you're going to be sat in front of know you just in those 10, 15 minutes. So those 10, 15 minutes, you can make it count. If you're someone who's really nervous, if you're someone who's really introverted, give yourself 15 minutes where you fake it until you make it and tell yourself that you can do it. These people don't know you. So those 15 minutes, you can become whatever you want to be. And looking back, that's the advice I would have given myself. So my Manchester University interview was way more relaxed. So at the time they were doing group interviews. So initially the first part of the process was you and seven under candidates, the other kind of applicants would sit around in the table and they would present you with a problem and you had to discuss the problem and they would obviously assess you on how well you spoke, whether you contributed, what you, what you talking about. And then once that was done, that was about half an hour, you would go do three separate interviews. So one station would be about top talking about your personal statement, another station would be about work experience, another station would be about why medicine. And again, I'm going to talk this at the end about life lessons and things like that. But looking back, prep, 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 prep as much as possible. Know vaguely what the answers are going to be. You need to be able to answer things like why medicine? You need to be able to answer why did you do this work experience? You need to be able to know what you've written in your personal statement and be prepared to back it up. So if you've written things like I was a peer mentor or I did this volunteering, they will be asking you questions about this. So you need to know this inside out. And I told myself, I literally had no other alternative careers that I wanted to do. I was like, it's medicine or nothing, <laughs> which is probably not the best pressure to put yourself under. But I could not imagine myself doing anything else. I did actually apply for insurance degree and that was biomedical science. And I managed to get into that one pretty easily. But I knew that even if I was rejected from all the four universities in terms of medical school, I would not have taken biomedical science. So I don't even know why I applied to it. I think it was a case of, just for reassurance that at least I've got something, even if I don't want to do that, it's either medicine or nothing. So <laughs> there was no in between. So the application process was in September, October. And then I had my interview with Manchester University in November and it was in March. So it was a long wait where I finally got the decision that I got into the university and on the basis that I had to get the grades. I was really, really happy with that. Now it was just down to actually getting the grades and at the time you had to get two A's and a B. The B was going to be in chemistry because again it was just yeah. And if I tell you I scraped a B in chemistry there was literally four points between me being rejected by the university and getting in. And now that I'm a little bit older and I've got the benefit of retrospect and this is for people who are planning on applying to medical school or university in general or have big dreams or anything like that this is for you. One of the things that I want to really, really emphasize is throughout life, everyone's gonna be going through lots of big decisions. And it's always natural to ask other people for their opinions or for their advice. When I was receiving opinions or advice from people, so for example, that teacher, you always have to think to yourself, who's giving this advice? What actual objective experience do they have to be able to give you this advice? And is it even accurate? Do they actually have good intentions? So you're gonna get a lot of unsolicited advice and opinions from people, but the really, the most important bit, and I'd like to stress this, having self-belief and self-confidence in your own abilities and in, in being able to chase your dreams, as cliche as that sounds, and not to let other people's opinions sway you or waver that confidence or self-belief. Even if you don't know what you want to do and you're not really sure about what your career where you want to end up in the future. It's really hard actually having to choose something at 16 and then having to commit to it for the rest of your life. At least make sure that you keep your head down and get yourself the grades that you deserve and are capable of. Then at least when it comes to applying to university and beyond, you can keep your options open and have decent grades to 
whatever you want to get into. Um, thank you very much for watching. If you've got to the end, my God, you deserve a medal. If you took something away from this video, please like it, subscribe to the channel because it really helped me grow and I'll see you in the next video.